And now we're getting ready to do this dump truck. We're not doing the box on this one. We're just doing the cab. I'm doing it in a two-tone. And I think they blew one of these big tires. These big tires are known as super symbols. And I think they blew one and tore the fender up at some point because I don't know how well the footage shows. It probably doesn't, but this is an absolutely enormous dent right here that runs from here all the way around. And it just has this whole thing creased in. And when the hood's closed and you're standing back, it's, it's quite the mess. And then there's a few other interesting dents across this hood too, like right here is a big crease. No idea where that could have come from. And up here you can see where the hood divots in like that. It's cracked and it's probably cracked over here too. So there's a lot of challenges on this one that are well pretty unique in the in the damage anyway. And the damage the more I survey on this panel right here, this entire panel including that what's behind that this entire panel is just far too great for me to repair because the whole thing is swayed in oh an inch and a half which means the bottom part back there is swayed out and that's why none of the rollers that are inside the hood want to go into any of these catches for the rollers um, that the whole thing is spread out so everything else has been altered the roller cages in here the roller catchers right there they've all been altered to make up for the fact that this is so heavily dished. And it's from here, clear to here, all along, and this is deep right here, and it's behind a brace, you can't shove it back out. Otherwise I could just get in there and shove it back out, but it's behind a brace, so you can't shove it back out. Um, and the brace itself is bent, and you can't straighten it because it's made of a uh, tube, so if you go to straighten it, it'll just crush it. So I'm gonna uh, get one of my uh, spare hoods from the corner of the yard there and bring it over here and steal this panel off of it, and replace it. And over here in the far corner of my yard is this hailed out 06 Peterbilt hood. And the top is useless, it's hailed out, but all the braces are good and the sides are good. And so I'm gonna take the brace and the side off of that side and put it on that dump truck. Now we got this hood drug over into the shop here and uh, we're gonna remove this entire panel and all these braces with it. We need all that stuff. And what else I've found, and I'm standing on the tire, the front tire of this semi, and I'm looking past the motor, past the radiator, and into the hood. And as you can see, that corner, both corners, have a brace that's built in there. This one, though, is broken. Broken clean off behind there. So I need to uh, cut it loose there in the middle and right there and free up that stopper. It's kind of a stopper. It, it lands when the hood closes, it lands right there on that black rubber deal right there. And that's what holds, that's what holds the upper part of the hood in place. That's what holds the lower part, these rollers right here. So I need to take that loose and mount it to the other uh, brace that I have out of that other hood that I have just happened to have in the shop right now and uh, replace that that main brace there and here's the other hood and as you saw in the other footage I removed this other side that's just the fender I took off the truck to get it out of the way and I just have it sitting there and now I need to remove this brace the entire thing so now I'm gonna go inside and cut the back side all these rivets so I can get this whole entire panel all the way, this whole entire deal out of there. I'm gonna cut these bottom rivets. These are what's called a huck rivet. So they're really hard on the outside. You're better off just cutting them with a, with a cutting wheel from the other side. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna cut all these and I'm gonna remove this panel and then get that panel ready to put in and begin riveting it back into place. So as you can see, we got the entire side of the hood gone now. 
um, including that top corner brace. I fully intended to leave it until I realized that it was also cracked. That one's broken completely through, and this one was cracked literally halfway through. So I got went ahead and took it off too. And I'll be taking that one off here in a minute. And here's where I'll be retrieving these braces from. And I'll need to get both of them. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this sander, six inch DA sander, it's got 220 on it. I'm gonna go ahead and sand this entire side. I've got some uh, dents there at the top. That way I've sanded between all the rivets and I don't have to get in there and scratch them quite as precisely as I would have to if the rivets were in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand it all first before I put rivets on there, that'll help a lot. And then take care of that body work as well so I'm not working right next to rivets. So that's the first thing I'm doing. And I'll also do the same right here. This is on the other side of the truck. Do you see all those rivets are missing? That's where I took that brace out. I'm gonna go ahead and sand that too before I put those in so it's just easier to sand. Otherwise you have to sand around all the rivets like you do right there. So I'll go ahead and sand that too. And I've got this side sanded, ready for body work. I'm gonna do a little body work in the few spots that need it. And then I'm gonna start putting this thing together. Now I've spread this body work and it's just about ready. I can feel it's tackiness is almost gone. You, once you've done it a, a while, you'll be able to feel when it's actually ready. Yes, it's, it's firmed up, but it's got a certain tackiness on the outside that lets me know that if I try and sand it now, it's going to instantly and permanently clog my paper. It's just too goopy yet. But here in just a minute, uh, it's going to be firm enough and I'll show you some sanding techniques that'll get you through something like this pretty quick. All right, it's just about ready. Now what you're going to want to have along for this ride is a sanding block. And for something that's this long, you're going to want a longer block. I've got about a this is a 10 or a 12 inch block and I've got 40 grit on it because I want to get this right down to business. Now, the other thing you're going to want to have handy is pressurized air. And, and I'll show you why that's so important here in just a second. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin sanding on it and then I'm going to clean it instantly with this. Watch this. Then you want to clean this out. This isn't bad at all, but you do want to keep it clean. The best way to do that is pressurized air. That way you're not knocking down any of your angular uh, 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 coating on here, your abrasive coating and making it more dull. You're not touching it at all. But I'm getting the most of that off of there anyway. Then you'll continue. And now you can see these edges are starting to get thin. I'm starting to get where I need to be and it's starting to clog the paper. If it clogs the paper down the middle here, everything down the middle is no longer gonna sand on here. When you think about it, any part of your paper that is clogged is no longer actually abrading this. So now you are technically sanding unevenly. If you could picture taking a piece of this paper, fresh paper and sanding on it versus taking a fresh piece of this paper and just put a piece of tape right down the middle. Now you know the middle's not gonna be sanding. You know you're gonna be unevenly sanding at that point. That's about what that's like, whether it's the middle, whether it's the end, whether it's the side all the way down. If you have it clogged, you're going to be sanding unevenly. That's why it's important. Use your air tip, keep it clean. And the more quickly it gets clogged, the more often you keep it clean. Otherwise you're sanding unevenly and wasting your time. Sometimes, it's every couple strokes, you gotta clean it. Otherwise you're sanding unevenly, look at that. Every couple strokes. And normally I have a respirator on when I do this or a dust mask, but just so I can talk, I don't this time. Look, couple strokes, all it took. Now you see I bend it now? I'm not running it like this, I'm running it like this. Because you, you, if you run it the same direction, the same thing every single time, you're not gonna sand it evenly. You're not gonna get the body work where you want it. Already, already kind of full.
a lot of times I'll just hook this right in my carpenter pants. I've got a lot of loops down here in pockets. I'll just hook it, hook this handle right in there somewhere. That way I can sand with both hands and start coming in like this and we can make this radius correct. See how it's tearing deep? That's what I was talking about. It tears deep and then that's not a good edge, but I can put up with it. Now I'm gonna lighten my pressure and change the way I sand a little bit only because I want this to come out nice and even. You can wash it out and then you have to start over. You can sand on it all day and eventually get all your body work back out if you want. It's about knowing when you're about ready. And this heavily feathered edge lets me know I'm about ready. So a couple more times across light and this will be ready. Real light, I'm lightening my pressure a lot now. There, that one's done. Now I'm gonna move on and do the same thing to that one. Hit it a couple times, clean it out, hit it a couple times, clean it out, rinse and repeat.